The Adventures of Balance season is here in Pokemon Go. During this season, you'll be able to get a free Master Ball, you'll be able to catch newly released Paldean Pokemon, and much more. In this video, I'm going to go through all the details, and I'm going to give you some of my thoughts and tips. I'll start with all the details first, so if you want to skip ahead to the thoughts and tips, timestamps are in the description. The season starts on September 1st at 10am and ends on December 1st at 10am. Firstly, let's start with the Master Ball. Throughout the season, there will be a timed investigation. Once completed, this will reward you with a Master Ball. This is effectively a timed research that will need to be completed by November 21st at 8 p.m. local time. Otherwise, you'll have to purchase a special research from the shop in order to get the Master Ball as a reward from that. So make sure you get this timed research done within the time limit to get your Master Ball, otherwise you'll have to buy it if you want one. Here are all the tasks that you need to get the Master Ball on the screen now, but I will be going through some tips for completing them later on in the video. On the topic of special research, there will be a branched special research where you will choose your Paldean partner Pokemon. And this seems to be a season-wide kind of special research, and it will be available from September 5th at 10 a.m. Throughout the season, there'll also be some seasonal bonuses. You'll be able to open 40 gifts per day and you'll be able to hold up to 40 gifts in your bag. You'll also have 2 times raid damage when raiding with your friends and you'll get 1.5 times XP from leveling up friendship levels. Moving on to the raids. Shadow Zapdos will be making its debut in 5 star shadow raids. These raids will be available every Saturday and Sunday throughout the season and the shiny will be available. Remember shadow raids are in person only so you won't be able to use remote raid passes, you'll only be able to use the orange free raid passes and the green premium battle passes. In regular 5 star raids we have Cartona and Celesteela available from the 1st of September to the 16th. From the 1st to the 8th Cartona will be in the northern hemisphere only and Celesteela will be in the southern hemisphere only. But then from the 8th to the 16th they will swap hemispheres. So over the course of the 2 weeks you will be able to encounter both of them in your own hemisphere, but you can also remote raid them from the other hemisphere if you want them sooner. Cartana and Celesteela will also be sharing raid hours on September 6th and September 13th. On September 6th, Cartana will be in the north and Celesteela will be in the south, and then it'll be reversed for September 13th. Following these two Ultra Beasts, Genesect Burn Drive will be in 5 star raids from the 16th to the 23rd with a raid hour on the 20th. Then Raikou, Entei, and Suicune will make their return to 5 star raids from the 23rd of September to October 6th, and they'll have a raid hour on the 20th. In Mega Raids will be Mega Manectric from September 1st to the 16th, and then Mega Gardevoir will take over till the 1st of October. We also have information on the events for September. Charmander Community Day Classic will be going on on September 2nd between 2pm and 5pm. We will have the Paldean Adventure event from September 5th at 10am till the 10th at 10am, and we do have the details for this event which are as follows. The event will have Ultra Unlock bonuses of Gold Pokestops, 4 times Catch XP, and Stardust. Wild Encounters for the event will be Hoppip, Houndour, Buizel, Fletchling, Sprigatito, Fuecoco, Quack, and the Chonk. The Chonk can be shiny on its release, which is really nice. And Hoppip, Houndour, Buizel, and Fletchling will all have increased shiny rates. In 7km eggs and field research will be Fuecoco, Quaxley, Sprigatito, and the Chonk. In 1 star raids will be Unknown, A, D, E, L, and P. 3 star raids will have Machamp, Camera, Metagross, and Turtonator. In 5 star raids will be Cartona and Celesteela, depending on the hemisphere you're in. And Mega Manectric will be in Mega Raids. There will also be a free Le Chonk themed timed research and a free new season special research available. There will be a collection challenge and there'll be new avatar items to celebrate the release of the Teal Mask DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The next event after a Paldean Adventure will actually be effectively a part 2 of that event which is the Ultra Unlock Paldea. This event will be taking place from September 10th at 10am till September 15th at 8pm. We do also have the details for this and they are as follows. Again it will have Ultra Unlock bonuses of Gold Pokestops, 4 times Catch XP and Stardust. The Wild Encounters will be Hoppip, Houndour, Buizel, Fletchling, Sprigatito, Fuecoco, Quaxley, Lechonk, Nimble, Paw, me and rare spawn Frigibax. Hoppip, Houndour, Buizel and Fletchling will have increased shiny rates. In 7 km eggs will be Sprigatito, Fuecoco, Quaxley and Lechonk. Poor me will be in field research. In 1 star raids will be unknown A, D, E, L and P. 3 star raids will be Turtonator, Cleavor and Bombardier which can be shiny on its release like Lechonk. In 5 star raids will be Cartona or Celesteela depending on the hemisphere you're in and Mega Manectric will be in Mega Raids. There'll be a $5 research in the shop and new avatar items to celebrate the release of the Teal Mask DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Following the these two Paldean themed events, there'll be an Oddish research day on September 17th at 2pm till 5pm and if you haven't got shiny Oddish or the family of shinies this will be a great chance to get them because they're normally 1 in 10 on research days. Following this will be the Psychic Spectacular event from September 20th at 10am till the 24th at 8pm. September Community Day will be taking place on September 23rd between 2pm and 5pm and it is leaked to be grubbing. The Out to Play event will take place on September 27th at 10am till October 2nd at 8pm and then finally there'll be an 
Azurail Hatch Day on September 30th between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Again, like Research Day, the shiny is going to be 1 in 10 here, so definitely worth going after on this day. There'll be a Go Battle League weekend on October 7th at 12 a.m. till the 8th at 11.59 p.m. The event will have a free timed research rewarding Gita style gloves. There'll also be paid timed research for $1 or your local equivalent. The active leagues will be Master League Premier and Single Type Cup Great League Edition. The bonuses for the event will be three times starters from win rewards. For the spotlight hours for September, on September 5th we've got Wooper with two times evolution XP. On the 12th will be Mankey with two times catch candy. On the 19th will be Giraffe Rig with two times catch XP. And the 26th will be Growlithe with two times catch stardust. With each change of the season we see new Pokemon spawning the different biomes in the world. This season in cities we will see Gengar, Gulpin, Baldum, Tranquil, Scraggy, Gothita and Dedene. In forests we will see Chansey, Staravia, Lopunny, Croagunk, Shalmut, Morlul and Oranguru. In mountains we've got Onyx, Sableye, Agron, Darumaka, Gola, Fletchinder and Togedemaru. And in beaches and water we've got Slowbro, Shelder, Pelipper, Carablast, Gumi, Dupida and Sandygast. Also different Pokemon will be spawning exclusively to the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere we'll have Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totodile, Larvitar, Deerling, Autumn Form, Tyrant and Amora. In the southern hemisphere the exclusive spawns will be Snivy, Tepig, Oshawott, Tertuga, Archan, Deerling, Spring Form and Dino. In 2km eggs we've got Chinchow, Meditite, Larvester, Fomantis and on the 15th of September at 8pm we'll also have the Chonk added to the egg pool. In 5km eggs we'll have Lickitung, Gligar, Larvester and on the 15th of September at 8pm we'll have Sprigatito, Fuecoco and Quack added to the egg pool. In 7km eggs will have Hisui and Growlithe, Voltorb, Quillfish and Sneasel. In 10km eggs will be Larvester, Carbink, Gumi, Jangmoo, and on the 15th of September at 8pm we'll have Frigibax added to the egg pool. In 5km Adventure Sinker eggs will have Kranidos, Shieldon, Hapini, Munchlax and Alomomola. And in 10km Adventure Sink eggs will have Gibble, Gumi, Rockruff and Jangmoo. For all of these egg pools there will actually be more Pokemon than what I've mentioned but these are the main highlights. In research breakthroughs this season you will be able to encounter one of the following Pokemon. Pokemon. Galarian Farfetch'd, Larvitar, Sableye, Bagon, Furfru or Gumi. We also have some information on the showcases for September which will help you decide which XXS and XXL Pokemon to keep when you find them. Also they are worth doing to get some extra XP, Stardust and some premium items for doing pretty much nothing. Charmander and Charizard will be in showcases on September 2nd between 2pm and 5pm. From the 5th at 10am till the 9th at 8pm will be Lechonk. From the 10th at 10am till the 13th at 8pm will be Nimble. From September 4th 14th at 10 a.m. till the 15th at 8 p.m. will be Poor Me. On September 17th between 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. will be Oddish. On September 20th at 10 a.m. till the 22nd at 8 p.m. will be Spoink. On the 23rd between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. will be Grubbin and Vikavolt, which basically confirms that it'll be Grubbin Community Day on that day. On the 27th at 10 a.m. till the 29th at 8 p.m. will be Hisui and Growlithe and regular Growlithe, and that showcase will repeat on September 30th at 10 a.m. till October 2nd at 8 p.m. So that's it for the details. Here are my thoughts and tips. Starting with the Master Ball timed research, many of these tasks will be able to get done with just playing the game naturally, but some might be a little bit more tricky. Doing 60 raids within the time limit of around 80 days could be difficult if you're a free to play player or you just don't raid that often. Realistically, using your free raid pass every day gets this done with quite a bit of time to spare, and maybe we'll get lucky with a raid day or something like that before the time limit ends, so that could help to get a few raids done. For the field research tasks, it's a really good idea to play on community day if you can because the community day field research tasks are always really easy to do that usually just catch three of the featured Pokemon so you can get quite a few of them done quite quickly. Also you get a field research task at the start of each day which is usually really easy to do. You can usually just do them from your home. Excellent throws may be a little bit tricky for some people but using pinat berries might help this and if you're doing legendary raids using the circle lock technique will help land excellent throws more often. The seasonal bonuses seem to not be too bad because they synergize well with all being friendship related. Being able to open more gifts is really good for people that don't have a lot of Pokestops nearby and it'll also make leveling up friendship with multiple people easier. Going up a friendship level will have 1.5 times the amount of XP, so I'll just run through how much that will be with the bonus and with a lucky egg. So a good friend will normally give 3k XP, and with the season bonus it'll be 4.5k XP and 9k with a lucky egg. Great friend is normally 10k XP, which will be 15k with the bonus and 30k with a lucky egg as well. Ultra friend is normally 50k XP, but will be 75k XP with the bonus and 150k XP with a lucky egg. And for best friends, the XP is normally 100k, which will be 150k with the season bonus and 300k XP with a lucky egg on top of that. This means that leveling up friendship this season is going to be a really good way to get XP so if you've still got XP to get to level 50 I'd recommend sending as many gifts and doing as many friendship interactions as you can this season. Moving on to the notable wild encounters. Starting with cities, Gengar is a great spawn and worth catching if you do see one. It has a mega and 
therefore it has a 1 in 64 chance of being shiny. It's also a ghost type which is one of the rarer types so you could help you with your Hex Maniac medal. Additionally, Mega Gengar is the best ghost type raid attacker in the game and one of the best overall damage dealers. Gengar is ranked 82 in the Ultra League. Beldum is another one worth hunting because Metagross is the second best steel type raid attacker in the game and it's number one in its shadow form. It's also a top 10 psychic type raid attacker and Metagross is not a bad pick for the Master League being ranked 43. It also does have a mega form that's coming in the future that will be even stronger. Scraggy is a good spawn for PvP because Scrafty is ranked 11 in the Great League and 31 in the Ultra League. In Forests, Chansey will be spawning and it will be worth going after this one if you're still after getting more Blissies to defend gyms. Morlul is also available which will give a boosted 500 Stardust per catch. In the Mountains, Onyx will be spawning and Celix is a really strong Pokemon in PvP. It is ranked 12 in the Great League and 2 in the Ultra League. Agron could be worth picking up because it does have a 1 in 64 shiny rate and its Mega is a top 5 Steel type raid attacker. Darumaka is also not a bad spawn because Darmana is a decent budget fire type raid attacker and its galarian form is a good ice type raid attacker with a strong zen mode coming in the future. Near beaches and water, Pelipper is a good spawn for pvp because it's ranked 17 in the great league and 40 in the ultra league. Carablast might be worth going after because a Scavalier is ranked 70 in the ultra league. For the northern hemisphere exclusive spawns it will be good to look out for Totodile because Feraligator in its shadow form is a top 10 water type raid attacker. Larvitar is a good spawn to look out for because Mega Tyranitar is the number 2 rock type raid attacker and the number 1 dark type raid attacker. Tyrant could be worth it as well because Tyrantrum is a top 10 rock type raid attacker and Amora's evolution Aurorus is good for PvP being ranked 66 in the Great League and 15 in the Ultra League. For the Southern Hemisphere exclusive spawns, Dino is the one to look out for because Hydreigon is a top 5 dark type raid attacker and Zwilus is ranked 65 in the Great League. Moving on to notable raid encounters and starting with the Shadow Raids, Shadow Zapdos is a top 10 electric type raid attacker and it is ranked 46 in the Ultra League and 48 in the Master League so not a bad pick for PvP. Although raiding it will be pretty tricky if you are a rural player requiring around five or six trainers to be in person to take it down and you can't invite people and they have to be in person so your best bet is to interact with local discords and facebook groups to try and coordinate a raid or you could go to nearby cities or public landmarks and hope there are some people doing the raid there so for the regular five star raids cartona could be worth raiding because it is the highest dps grass type raid attacker in the game celestila however doesn't really have any meta elements at the moment so you might want to skip this one genesect is a top 10 bug and steel type raid attacker so not a bad poke Pokemon to raid. Entei in its shadow form is a top 5 fire type raid attacker so could be worth picking up some exile candies if you have the shadow. Raikou in its shadow form is currently the top electric type raid attacker so definitely worth getting some exile candies for it even if you don't have the shadow version because eventually it will come out in shadow raids more than likely or Giovanni will have it again. Suicune unfortunately doesn't have any meta relevance at the moment so unless you're going for the shiny I'd give this one a pass. Mega Manectric is the fourth best electric type raid attacker so it could be worth doing enough raids to mega evolve one because then you can just walk an Electric or Manectric to get more Mega Energy. Mega Gardevoir is worth raiding because it's the best Fairy type raid attacker in the game. 100% IVs for the 5 star raid bosses are as follows. For Shadow Zapdos, the 100% IVs will be 2015 and 2519 with a weather boost in rainy or windy weather. Cartona's 100% IV CP values from raids will be 2101 and 2626 with a weather boost in sunny or snowy weather. Celesteela will have 1772 CP and 2216 in snowy and windy weather. Genesect will have 1916 and 2395 in rainy or snowy weather. Entei's 100% IV will be 1984 and 2480 in sunny weather. Raiko will have 1972 CP and 2466 in rainy weather. And 100% IV Suicune will have the CP value of 1704 or 2130 CP in rainy weather. So that's what you can expect for September in Pokemon Go. Let me know what you're most excited for in the comments. Check out this video on the screen now and as always like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.